Wow, it's late. I'm researching, and it started on Wikipedia, this quote from Richard Carpenter regarding Karen Carpenter not liking the song Solitaire. What? I'm bamboozled? I'm flamfloozled? I might even be clamboozled. I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's late. It just seemed wrong. I just did a first-time reaction of the Carpenter's Solitaire, and it quite literally moved me to tears. Neil Sedaka and Phil Cody's soaring melody and words, Richard Carpenter's sublime arrangement and production, and Karen Carpenter's empathetic and riveting performance. Just a perfect marriage. How is it possible that she didn't like it? Especially since Karen was reported a huge Neil Sedaka fan elsewhere. And then I discovered this clip. I opened for the Carpenters, you know that story. Yeah. And Richard Carpenter fired me because I got a standing ovation every night. Yeah. That's an old story. Yeah, I love it. But I was like, wow, they kind of glossed over this fight. I mean, that's the first question I'd be asking about. <laughs> Let's be honest, I would want the tea. Maybe it's because feuds tend to be controversial. Karen's vocal illustrates how music can convey complex emotions better than words alone. Once again, I'm down a rabbit hole, and my channel's about exploring complex emotions. I'm just going to report everything I found, and I hope I don't offend anybody. But let's discover the backstory of this classic. It's 1974. Karen and Richard Carpenter are touring London. They're invited to a party at Neil Sedaka's home. The guest list is star-studded. Among others are Paul McCartney, Rod Stewart, Elton John, along with his manager. Neil is celebrating. He had fallen off the charts when the Beatles took over, but his recent song, Laughter in the Rain, is a modest hit in the UK. And by September of that year, Neil signs with Elton John's new label, Rocket Records, hoping to have similar success back in America. Karen and Richard are enjoying the party, having a fabulous time, especially enjoying Neil's company. They get close rather quickly, and a friendship blossoms between the three. Of course, professionally, for instance, Richard's wonderful string arrangement skills are put to use on Neil's breaking up is hard to do but also charitably. Neil even attends a charity softball game the Carpenters throw annually. At some point, being a connoisseur of music and a lover of radio, Richard runs across Neil's version of Solitaire, tucking it back in his mind as a potential song for the next record. Neil Sedaka has said that he was inspired to write Solitaire after hearing a classical piece of music that used the word Solitaire in the title. Okay, I was inspired by Frederick Chopin. I loved to play Chopin as a piano student, and I sat at the piano, wrote the whole tune. Da 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 da, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Let's go back a bit to 1971. We're at the famous Brill Building in New York City, and Neil Sedaka runs into lyricist Phil Cody. Phil says in an interview, quote, I'm this hippie kid. I live in a little studio in Greenwich Village, and I come uptown every day and hang out at the office. And here is this guy who looks like he came in off the tennis court, asked me if I want to write songs with him. Neil gives Phil an education in songwriting, and Phil brings Neil into the 70s with contemporary lyrics inspired by his blues background and hippie lifestyle, which is why I think Solitaire has an almost spiritual undertone. Finished the tune, Phil Cody came, we wrote it up state New York, and he started to cry. He said, oh my God. He said, leave me, let me walk through the woods for a couple of hours. He said, what do you hear? I said, something sad, lonely man. And whatever that melody is, whatever that emotion is, whatever that fear and sadness and insecurity is, that's what the melody is. That's what those chords induce in me, along with the 
all those emotions. He came back a couple of hours later and with this magnificent lyric, and I sang it, and we both cried. Says Phil in another interview, I didn't know I had that in me, but Neil encourages me to make him cry, so I go for that particular part of Neil's throat. I'm trying to get a reaction out of Neil, and if I get a reaction out of Neil, I know I've done good. Phil said that Neil was the only one to believe in solitaire, and he records it first, but Andy Williams also expresses an interest in recording it, but with one caveat. Make the lyrics easier to sing, which at first upsets Phil, and he says, quote, but once I got used to the idea that my lyrics were in violet, it went rather smoothly. Over the course of time, as the Carpenters did the song, they basically did a mashup of the old lyric and the new lyric, which actually was better than either of the two, the Andy Williams or Neil's original. I think the Carpenters version was the one I like best. He even sits down one day to listen to all versions of the song and comes to the conclusion that it's Karen who really owns the lyric. When the time comes for the Carpenters to record it, Richard spends two weeks on the mix of the song, wanting to get it just right as he's using new techniques. It has been suggested that Richard had negative feelings towards Neil Sedaka for the incident we're going to talk about in a moment, and that's why he said Karen didn't like solitaire. And as a singer, you do need to feel what you're singing. But another possibility is that the song hit too close to home. In the past, Karen has tackled sadder subjects. Phil Cody wrote these lyrics during a time of divorce and spent so much time playing solitaire and his mind became symbolic of his loneliness. And Karen has never really been lucky in love, unlike their male counterparts, women musicians, don't really have suitors falling all over them. So I wonder if fame only intensifies her isolation. These lyrics ring a little too true. But inspiration happens sometimes when you don't really care about something. It opens you up to something divine. Richard knew Solitaire would be perfect for her range and asked her to sing it just once. And she just kills it in that one take. Now, she's always sought Richard's approval, which is not often given generously. But he thinks her vocal is one of her greatest, although it's unclear whether she disliked the song then. They both seek the approval of their label, though. Would I have gone out of my way to sign the Carpenters at that particular time? Probably not. But Herb liked them, wanted them, no problem. That's Jerry Moss, the co-founder of their label, whom, despite the Carpenters selling millions of records, he'd always treated them with indifference. They received this letter from him praising Horizon, which Solitaire was reportedly a favorite. This means so much to both Karen and Richard. So now it's the summer of 1975, and two singles are released from this album. Please Mr. Postman, which goes all the way to number one, and Only Yesterday, which hits number four, which I think should be reversed, but all right. <laughs> as a third single, Solitaire is released, and as it enters Billboard's Hot 100 at number 76, at that same time, Neil Sedaka is opening for the Carpenters at the Riviera in Las Vegas, Nevada. So he opens the show and then he comes back at the end to do a medley with the Carpenters of some oldies, including his hit, Breaking Up is Hard to Do. (laughs) 
Neil's career at this point is super hot, not only for himself, but also because he penned the song Love Will Keep Us Together by The Captain and Tennille. Look in my heart and let love keep us together. What happens next is a matter of he said, she said, or she said, he said, or he said, she said, he said. I don't know. I'm not sure. It is said that not only is Neil Sedaka's career out of control, so is his ego. Hey, I'm just reporting what they were saying. As apparently he broke some industry protocols, which, whatever that means. And Neil says, Richard Cobb defied me because I got a standing ovation every night. <laughs> whatever the truth <laughs> is, Neil is fired by the Carpenter's manager at Richard's request. Neil makes a fuss in the press, and except for snide reviews, the Carpenters rarely received bad press. And this was an exception, and Solitaire moved up one more week to number 17 before it began its quick decline, only 10 weeks on the charts, where at this point the Carpenter singles were usually top 5. The Sedaka incident must have had an effect on the chart performance of Solitaire, as disc jockey seemed all too willing to speak of the fiasco, while station directors concurrently dropped the single from rotation. Still not 30, neither would have realized the long-term effects of this firing. As I understand it, respect for the musicianship wouldn't come until later, so their big draw for most at that time were that they were clean-cut, all-American kiddos. You've been known as the squeaky clean brother and sister. Yeah, How do you right. react to that? I mean, is that really what you're like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the way we are. Uh, it is. At, uh, we're not squeaky, image. but we're clean. We're clean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. No. See, the, that's always been, you know, and it... Uh, it's kind of ironic because um, it's not only ourselves, but like Olivia, you know, she's also been the, named the uh, white bread queen. <laughs> and, you know, it used to bother us, you know, I, I used to talk about it. So firing someone for getting more applause was a serious blow to that image. Although they had minor hits, they would never again have a top 10 hit again. The stress of which... Karen internalizes these events and is confined to bed rest shortly afterward, having to cancel a very profitable tour to Japan and the UK. Also canceled is a royal command performance for the Queen of England. Her downhill slide, unfortunately, was just beginning. When did you, Richard, when did you and Karen both realize that she had a real problem that was dangerous? Well, uh... My family, friends, and I realized it as early as uh, 75. Mm. Uh, but of course, one of the problems with uh, anorexia nervosa is that the victim, a lot of times, uh, does not realize it his or herself. Because of everything that went down, the Carpenters never worked with Neil again. And of course, the friendship was completely lost. They tried releasing a version of Neil's Breaking Up Is Hard To Do as a gesture. Think of all that we've been through, cause breaking up is hard to do. But to no avail. Over the years, things between Neil and Richard have grown Tom Petty, Lori Petty, Petticoat Junction, just plain Petty. <laughs> I think both sides are hurt. Richard, for example, says Karen never liked Solitaire. The quote I started with was in a 1997 book. When it comes to how Richard or Karen made Solitaire truly great, Neil doesn't give them much credit. Clay Aiken covers it on American Idol, and Neil writes on his website that he wrote it for him. In post-interviews, he downplays the Carpenter's contribution. Although, more recently, Neil does a few mini-concerts right here on YouTube during COVID. On Solitaire. So here is the original, the way I wrote it at the piano. Special thanks to Karen Carpenter. There was a man Yes. Makes me 
cry. And ending it this way, I really hope that time softens hard feelings. And then those tears are for Karen. Richard, Neil, Karen are all remembered for their genius and in their own way. Solitaire's only grown in poignancy since Karen's passing. I believe that this song is about more than just a man who lost his love through his indifference. And I think that anyone who's felt deep loneliness probably knows what I'm talking about, even if I can't truly explain it. But then that's what the music's for. Anyway, this has been a crazy journey. I hope you liked it. <laughs> if you'd like to check out my reaction, the video will be right here. Or you can check out my reactumentary playlist down here. Or you can subscribe to me right here if you feel so inclined. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and I hope I get to see you next time. Popcorn Philosopher over and out.